Good evening, friends. It's so good to have you with us here tonight. We are going to continue to learn about the company that is coming in the Advent season. I brought along a vacuum cleaner and a broom and some other cleaning supplies. I mean, I saw that our sermon is called the cleanup crew, so I thought I would be ready to get some work done. But Lisa, where are your cleaning supplies? Well, that's awesome, Beth, that you brought these. You came all prepared to clean up, but this isn't the kind of cleaning exactly that we're going to be talking about tonight. Oh. Oh. Sorry. Okay, well, um, I also brought our candle along. Friends, do you have your candles ready? Let's turn them on and get ready for worship. You know what else I brought? What? My guitar. Perfect. I think we should sing a song together yeah. and jump right in. Woohoo! I can already hear the children singing right now. Me too. Me too. <laughs> Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds kept the watching or silent flocks by night, behold, throughout the heavens there shone a The shepherds feared and trembled when low above the earth rang out the angel chorus that hailed our Savior's birth. Go, tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go, tell it on the mountain. That Jesus Christ is born Down in a lowly manger The humble Christ was born And brought us God's salvation That blessed Christmas morn Go tell it on the mountain Over the hills and every That Jesus Christ is born. <laughs> well, I think we need to watch Jackie and Dane and Gage read our second Advent season reading and light another one of our candles. Our lists are long, even in this strange mess where we live these days. And we want to do it right. We want to be safe, but we want to be able to enjoy the season. We've got work to do to put right what has gone wrong, to heal what is broken, to mend the relationships, and to prepare, prepare for the company that will come. The prophet Isaiah rem reminds us that there is work to be done. Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight into the desert a highway for our God. When God comes in, then healing is to be found. But we need to make the way. We need to open the doors into our lives. So we light these candles as a sign of our faith that God we worshipped is not far from us. And that we can clear the way for that God to come and dwell with us. We light these fa candles in faith that company is coming. O come, O come, Emmanuel. And now please pray with me. Lord, help us to open our eyes, our ears, and our hearts to hear your message tonight. Help us to be people who are excited and willing to join the cleanup crew. Help us to understand the work that needs to be done. Amen. 
We've got work to do. Did you hear Dean say that? We have cleanup work to do, in fact, but not the kind of cleanup that Beth was hoping for when she brought all of these supplies with. The company that we wait for this Advent season isn't the kind of company that knocks on our front door and enters our home with hugs and gifts and treats. The company that we're talking about here this Advent season isn't the kind of company that you have to give up your room for so they have a bed to sleep in while they stay at your house. It isn't the kind of company that shows up with a suitcase or an overnight bag. The company that we're waiting for is much bigger than that, and the work we need to do to be ready for this company is much more complicated than vacuuming our carpets and dusting the shelves. This week, we begin again by hearing words from the prophet Isaiah, who foretold the coming of Jesus. Last week, Isaiah cried out to God, inviting him to come into our lives and save us from ourselves. This week, in chapter 40, verses 1 through 11, we hear these words of Isaiah calling out to God and prophesizing the arrival of another guest. Comfort. Comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem. Tell her that her sad days are gone and her sins are pardoned. Yes, the Lord has punished her twice over for all of her sins. Listen, it's the voice of someone shouting. Clear the way through the wilderness for the Lord. Make straight highway through the wasteland to our God. Fill the valleys and level the mountains and hills. Straighten the curves and smooth out the rough places. Then the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people will see it together. The Lord has spoken. A voice said, Shout. I asked, What should I shout? Shout that people are like the grass. Their beauty fades as quickly as the flowers in a field. The grass withers and the flowers fade beneath the breath of the Lord, and so it is with people. The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of our God stands forever. O Zion, messenger of good news, shout from the mountaintops, shout it louder, O Jerusalem, shout and do not be afraid. Tell the towns of Judah, your God is coming. Yes, the sovereign Lord is coming in power. He will rule with a powerful arm. See, he brings his reward with him as he comes. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will carry the lambs in his arms, holding them close to his heart. He will gently lead the mother sheep with their young. Comfort, comfort my people. God gave this instruction to Isaiah, comfort my people. At the time that Isaiah spoke these words, the people of Judah had been through some really tough times, and they weren't out of the woods yet. They still had many, many years of hardship ahead of them. They were living in exile, away from their home, afraid that they would never be able to return to their homeland. But God reaches out to them through the prophet to comfort them. He then tells them that company is coming. Someone very important is coming to clear the way through the wilderness for the Lord. Someone is coming to help make straight a highway through the wasteland for our God. The someone who was coming to do just that was John, John the Baptist. John the Baptist was sent to this earth to make a way for Jesus, to make way for Jesus. He was sent here to shout from the mountaintops, go tell it on the mountain that a savior was coming. He was sent to head up a cleanup crew. The wasteland that Isaiah speaks of can be thought of as life's trials and troubles. The people of Judah certainly had their fair share of trials and troubles, but so do we. Our messy world and our messy lives are modern-day wastelands. And the Bible uses John the Baptist to remind us that we have some cleanup to do. Most of what we know about John the Baptist comes from the Gospels, 
the books in our Bible titled Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Each of these men recounts John the Baptist's life a little bit differently, so I encourage you to get out your Bible and learn more about John. But tonight, we're going to use Mark's writings to further understand John the Baptist and the cleanup work that we need to be doing. Mark 1, verses 1 through 8 say, This is the good news about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God. It began just as the prophet Isaiah had written, Look, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, and he will prepare your way. He is a voice shouting in the wilderness, Prepare the way, for the Lord is coming. Clear the road ahead of him. This messenger was John the Baptist. He was in the wilderness and preached that people should be baptized to show that they had repented for their sins and turned to God to be forgiven. All of Judea, including all of the people of Jerusalem, went out to see and hear John. And when they confessed their sins, he baptized them in the Jordan River. His clothes were coarse camel hair. He wore a leather belt around his waist. For food, he ate locusts and wild honey. John announced, Someone is coming soon who is greater than I am, so much greater that I'm not worthy to stoop down like a slave and untie the straps of his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. John appears to us every Advent to remind us that we haven't been paying enough attention. John comes to us busting out of the wilderness in his camel hair clothes, eating bugs and wild honey. His odd character captures our fascination. Did I mention he ate bugs? He storms up and down the riverbank asking us to take the plunge. He doesn't seem to be here to listen. He's here to talk, to announce, to shout. A one-way communication, you might think. Except, John is asking for something from us. He's asking us to join the road crew. We've got streets to level and curves to straighten. Whether we think in personal terms about cleaning up our own hearts and bodies, straightening out our behavior patterns, or in a larger communal term, like justice and anti-racism, as we make straight the pathways to wholeness that have bent in ways that kept certain people out. Either way, there is work to be done. A response needs to be made. John wants us to be participants in our own salvation. John came to prepare people to accept Jesus as God's son. When John challenged the people to confess their sins individually, he showed them a new way to relate to God. When he baptized them, he was preparing them to receive Christ's message. This baptism demonstrated repentance, humility, and a willingness to turn away from sin. It was the beginning of a spiritual process. Now think of this all in the concept of the cleanup crew. Is change needed in your life before you can hear and understand the message of the Advent season? Do you need to get cleaned up? Cleanup can be hard. It can feel like you're being asked to move a mountain. Remember last week's cleanup scenario, your room? Have you been there? Your parents tell you, get in there and clean that room up. And when you step inside the door, you realize that this is not going to be easy. You have no idea where to even begin. Life can be that way too. Cleaning up our hearts can seem like a big project. Where do we start? Tonight, I want to suggest we start with prayer. Not because there isn't anything else we can do, but because this is where a conversation with God begins. Where, the, where are the hills 
that we need to be praying get moved out of the way so God's way can be seen? What are the valleys and who is down in those valleys that need to be lifted up so that they too can see the one who is coming? We don't pray because we're helpless. We pray because we know where the power is. We pray as though we were members of a cleanup crew, knowing we're making a difference in the world and in the lives of those around us. We pray asking for guidance so we know where to go and what work to do. So I invite you to pray. Ask God to help you clean up your heart. Ask God to point you in the direction of someone who needs to hear what you have to say about God. Ask God to point you toward the things in this world that you can help change. And once you've asked God these questions, be prepared to listen. That's the tricky part. Be prepared to hear God's answers in that still, small voice. Be prepared to hear God's answers, not in words, but through signs. Maybe you have a friend who needs a boost. Change their world. Help them through their tough time. Maybe you see something on the news that breaks your heart. Find out how you can make a difference in what is going on. Maybe you notice your neighbor is having trouble keeping their sidewalks cleared of snow. Help them clean it up. There are so many ways in which we can work to be God's cleanup crew. Keep praying, keep listening, and keep cleaning. Amen. We have some actions for our second song. Peace, like a river, and joy, like a fountain and love like an ocean. I've got peace like a river. I got peace like a river. Peace like a river. for joining us this evening and before we go how about we do our mission statement who are we we are a missionary force of Christians and what do we do offer the care and compassion of Christ to whom to all and where do we meet you wherever you are on life's journey have a great week guys bye see you next week <laughs>